Hello, I'm Mark Aaron with River City TV. We're continuing our look at the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research, and we're back with a familiar face on the research side of things, Dr. Scott Lohman, who's a senior scientist here. We first introduced you to Scott, I guess it was about three or four months ago, we were talking about the drone technology and how they're utilizing their AgBot, I think they call it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and utilizing that to help farmers here in our community. And we're so excited to announce today that the Institute has received a Tobacco Commission grant that's going to be funding some more research using the AgBot. So that's what we're here today to talk more about. And Scott, uh, appreciate you taking the time to join us. I know you're excited about this new initiative. We certainly are. Now tell me a little bit about uh, the commission, the, the uh, funding from this grant. Uh, I guess you all matched it, the total price tag for the project, and what all is going to go into this project? Okay, the total price tag for the project is about $236,000. Right. Um, it's a two-year project in collaboration with the Tobacco Commission, Cooperative Extension, uh, of course ILR and others. Mm -hmm. And the, the main goal of the project will be to work with 20 farmers, and we'll be flying over their fields at multiple times during the season. Uh, and we'll look at the data after the first year and determine maybe where the most productive areas of the fields are versus the least productive areas of the fields. That's what a lot of people don't realize is many farms, the farm itself can have an area that produces three times as much as the other part of the farm. So we want to look at those areas, collect samples from the ground, uh, do leaf tissue analysis, okay. and, uh, and really dive into the problems that they're having there. And then we'll look at that data after the first year and we'll go back the second year and make recommendations. And a lot of this is interacting with the farmer, with their specific type of farm, because they're really the experts. Sure. And this field itself is pretty new. Um, what's interesting about this project also is that in the past, precision agriculture and drone flights and multispectral imaging, that's been focused on large crops like, mm -hmm. like uh, corn, soybean, wheat. Okay. Uh, this project is going to focus on more specialty crops like we produce in this region. So it really is to benefit this region and the farmers in this region. And speaking of the farmers in this region, I know you said you're working with the Cooperative Extension and other agencies to identify farmers that can take part in this project. But if there are any out there that are watching, they can contact you to maybe take part, right? That's right. This is a new project and we'll be uh, working with Cooperative Extension to identify growers. But mm -hmm. we always welcome growers to either contact us, myself, or the Institute or Cooperative Extension to let them know that they're interested in this project. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a cutting edge technology and we can learn as much from the farmers as hopefully the farmers can learn from us. Right, and it was amazing. We were first introduced to the AgBot a couple of months ago. As we mentioned, you're seeing video now of the AgBot itself, but it's amazing what it can do using that thermal imaging. And we're looking at a monitor here behind us and, uh, and on the screen now. Explain to me a little bit about what it does when it goes over those farms and how it can identify those certain areas, whether it's uh, more water reaches certain areas. It's a lot that it can do with those cameras on that AgBot. That's right. <laughs> um, the, the AgBot itself has two cameras, but one of the cameras itself is actually four different little cameras together. Wow. Um, so it's called a multispectral camera, and it collects images in green, red, and blue wavelengths as well as near red edge. And it takes all those images and puts them together. The AgBot itself is fully autonomous. Mm -hmm. We program it here at the site. We select the field. We select the boundaries. And, uh, and we take it to the site. And we basically push a button mark. Mm -hmm. And it flies itself. It yeah. flies within two feet of where we tell it to. It captures images the same time every time. And then comes back and lands. And we, put a, we, we stitch those images together. We take a, it's a computer program that we use to right. stitch those images together. And then that... Uh, multi-spectral camera tells us plant health. If, if you're looking at the screen now, uh, you can see that in the middle of the plants it's green, mm -hmm. around the edges of the plants it's yellow, and then at the base of the plants they're red. That's, that, that's the type of data it gives us from 200 feet in the air. Amazing. And that's on the multi-spectral camera. The second camera is the thermal camera, and that can tell us it's really neat. It can also tell, it can tell us how fast plants are growing, mm -hmm. as well as areas of the fields that are more, more moist than others. So sometimes in the field, of course, everybody knows plants like water. Sure. But plants don't like too much water, and too much water in the soil can increase disease pressure. So we want to identify those spots as well. And then finally, we do have a visual camera that we can place on it that's a 4K camera that you can tell productivity of the plants in different areas. We can actually look at the green pixels of the plants to tell how much biomass is being produced in different areas. That's amazing. 
So that gives you a little insight on actually how the drone technology works. Uh, again, I, I appreciate you taking the time to join us. We're so excited to uh, continue to learn a lot more about the research that's going on here at the Institute for Advanced Learning and Research, especially with the AgBot. It's very intriguing. And again, if you are a farmer here in the community, they're looking for you. And, and if you'd like to take part in this project, give Scott a, a call. See if you'll be a good fit for the project. And again, we look forward to continuing our dialogue and giving us update once you get that information back as we go into year two. We're excited about it. Thank you very much, Mark.